Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out. Uh, excited about this season. Excited about a new beginning. Most important, I'm really excited about the way this group has been working. Uh, they've been extremely energetic. They've been uh, practiced with a purpose for most of the time. Uh, and I think, um, you know, I think this is a group that's really looking forward to proving uh, what they can do on the court, both individually and as a team. So, if anybody has any questions, I'd love to take them because I do not talk at a podium very often. Uh, real quick, we've got mics on the sides. Do me a favor, raise your hand for that, and then introduce yourself and your affiliate. Right here. Go ahead. I'm Ryan McFanner from the Baltimore Sun. Uh, Coach, I was, I was curious. You mentioned how trying to find players to build up the roster this year, you wanted to find guys that complement the returning guys like Dante, Julian, and Akeem. Uh, could you go into detail how like the new guys you uh, brought to the program complement those guys? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, if you look at the roster, you know, as, as we built this roster, we really, when you take over, you know, I was really, I wanted to respect the guys that stayed. Uh, I wanted to make sure that they graduated and they left uh, having the opportunity to make sure uh, they could prove what they were all about. And if you look at the roster, one of the things that we really kind of needed, we needed guard depth, we needed shooting. Um, so we went out and obviously Jameer, Don, Jahari, uh, all guys um, that we thought, if you look at Juju, Hawk, Dante, uh, Ike, Ian, all guys that kind of were different than what those guys were. No one was going to step on each other's toes. They were all going to come in uh, and not compete, but at the same time kind of gel and, and form a good unit. Coach, can you uh, give us a few words about the coaching staff that you put together and how that's helping with the recruiting? Yeah, the coaching staff is great. Um, it's something that, you know, Damon and I talked about uh, when I got the job. I wanted to make sure I was going to be able to hire the right guys. And David, uh, obviously Tony and Grant are three guys that I all knew, deeply respected. Um, David obviously has been a head coach, will be a head coach again. Tony and Grant will be head coaches very soon. So I wanted guys that could teach the game at a very high level, like they all can. I wanted guys that were from this area. Uh, obviously Tony and David are grew up in this area, went to school in this area. Uh, and I think I have three of the best assistant coaches and I have to thank Damon because he understood uh, that it was, it was gonna cost us a little bit of money to go out and get the best guys, but uh, he was all forward. And I think this staff has worked extremely hard, not only to put this roster together, but recruiting right now, recruiting next year or the year after. I just think I have three rock stars. Dave Preston, WTOP Radio. Uh, this is obviously your first year here, but this is not your first year as a head coach. You've had first years elsewhere. What lessons did you learn your first year at, at Iona and Seton Hall that will help you this year? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing was making sure that really the, the biggest lesson I learned was the guys I brought in, and it's a little bit different because the transfer portal has changed what happened, like you, I didn't have the transfer portal at Seton Hall, so it was like the roster you had, whatever was left over, you kind of had to deal with that and build off that. Uh, this year, I really wanted to make sure the guys that we brought in were gonna set the tone from a work ethic, from a culture ethic, from an academic effort um, that will be able to set the kind of, the, set the standard going forward. Um, because right now we're, we're laying the carpet and we want the carpet to be smooth so we can keep building on that and build stacks and stacks on that. And the most important thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to get a staff that was going to be great for my players. And I wanted to bring guys in that were going to set this culture, set the tone, so that next year I didn't have to reset the carpet, in essence. Is that the carpet's been laid, the guys coming in next year know how we work, know how we do things, know how we act, know how we go to class. Uh, and that's probably the biggest difference is I wanted to a world-class staff, which I have, and I wanted to make sure the guys I brought in were gonna be able to set the tone moving forward. 
Emily Jimbabwe, Washington Post. Kevin, I'd assume part of your job this offseason was to try to re-energize the fan base. In, in what ways do you feel like you and your staff tried to do that? And then what does that look like as the season starts and, and with the product you put out? Yeah, I, th I think the first thing that that we really, we wanted to embrace the, the tradition and the greatness of this program uh, as I look up at the national championship banner. So I thought coming in, um, I really wanted to get the former players on board. Not that they weren't, but I really wanted to embrace them for us, uh, get them involved, get what they wanted out of the program. To me, that was really important. It wasn't just going to be my vision. I knew what my vision for this program was, but I wanted to blend that with uh, what Coach Williams' vision was, uh, Lefty's vision was, what the former players wanted out of this program. Um, and I took all their feedback and I kind of mixed it in with what I wanted this program to be, you know, because um, you know, bring a little bit of the past, a little bit of the future, and then and move on. And that was, I think, the first and foremost was to get the fan base to understand that these former players were going to be a huge part. Coach Williams is a huge part. He's been instrumental in us having success so far. Um, and I think the second base, the second time was, you know, our first couple of recruits. You know, we really try to get, you know, local kids. Um, just to kind of let the fan base know that you know this area is going to be huge to us. Uh, we're going to recruit it. We're going to bring kids in. We're going to you know make sure that they're the stars. Kind of what we did. Uh, I did at Seton Hall. So I think those two things were really the main things that we did. The style of play is going to be big. Um, you know we're going to play probably way too fast and way. Uh, we're going to shoot a ton of threes. We're going to press. We're going to get after it. Probably at times we won't look good just because. I have 13 guys that played five different styles, and now they're trying to get my style. But uh, I think, again, we're laying down the groundwork for the future. Coach Lou Holder, Holder Sports, you just touched on it briefly, but if you can expound a little bit more. Uh, our prominent coach said last year that the DMV is one of the most fertile recruiting grounds in the entire country because of the makeup of the kid that is from here. I mean, people here know it, but what is it about you coming from another area? What is it about this area that is so special? I, I, it's really simple. I hate to say that. Um, these kids in this area get unbelievable coaching at a, from a very young age. It's very unique. Um, the kids don't transfer schools. They don't transfer AU programs. They get great coaching at the AAU level and they get great coaching at the high school level. And it's not that there's not great high school coaches other ways. It's just the amount of coaching that is done in this area to me is it's second to none. It, it's it's something I've never seen. You know, you can go different areas and see great high school coaches, great AAU programs, but the amount that are in this area, it's it's what makes the, it's what makes these kids so special. Kevin Barry Spillard from the Washington Post. Um, as a coach from the outside, you would have had impressions of what Maryland is and what Maryland could be. Um, I wonder if since you've gotten on campus and taken the job, what you've learned that might have shaped that vision or sharpened it a little bit more. You know, it, I was told how passionate the fan base was um, and how tough they can be. And everybody's right. Um, it's a very passionate fan base, probably, and it's a much bigger alumni base and fan base. I, I knew it. I had a, I had a something in my mind that I thought it was, but I was recruiting in San Francisco, Texas. I was down in Florida, uh, and everywhere I went, every airport I hit, it was a Maryland fan. Um, and to me, it kind of as I've been here. Uh, I've just realized that, you know, it's a great fan base because it's so passionate about this sport. It loves Maryland basketball. Um, every time I go out to dinner with Coach Williams or play golf with him, it, it's amazing for as angry as he can get how many people love him. You know, it's, it's amazing. And it's something that's, you know, he, he, like I said, he's been instrumental. He's given me the, not the, he's, teaching me lesson after lesson about this place. And I just think it's a it's a, an extremely fun and passionate fan base. Heather McDonough, NBC4. Kind of similar to what you were talking about, just looking uh, about, you mentioned your vision and what you're talking to the former players about. 
could you give us, you know, not getting into specifics, but just any possible, um, what they said to you, any, what they said to you or, or coupled with your vision. Um, I see you're smiling right now. No, so I mean, I, it's, my, it, my great athletic director is here, so he's going to get mad at me for a second. You know, they kind of want, they, they, it, it went from changing the logo, um, different color uniforms, scheduling, um, events, uh, the type of players we bring in. It, 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 I mean, we, we sat down and, you know, we talked to everybody. Um, and it was great feedback. It, you know, it's, and it's crazy. I mean, lefties, lefties guys have such a different thing than Gary's guys and, and Mark's guys, you know, the younger guys. And so we kind of got them all together. And we had dinner here one night. We probably had about 100 guys, and it was, it was really cool. Uh, we didn't have some of the, the new younger guys because it happened right when the NBA guys were leaving. But um, it was kind of just a mixture of everything. And it was all everyone all had the same thing. They just kind of wanted to see the passion from the players back a little bit. Um, see it, see maybe a little bit more excitement uh, getting up and down. And, and, you know, I had some of the older guys saying, you know, I'd love to see, you know, more zone and slow it down. So it, it, was, it was all over. But it was all, you know, like I said, I took everyone's – advice and I still have to blend it with what I really want to do. I'm going to get in trouble. I love that. I wear it all the time and I make him so mad because I don't wear the end. I, love, I guess the end is important, but I love that turtle. Turtle's big. The turtle's big. Hey, Kevin. Uh, Andy Cuskin, Baltimore Sun. I'm curious, when, when you were building this roster out this season, how important was it to have a guy like Dante Scott to hold over a, a starter, be here, and kind of help mesh with this unit? Yeah, Dante's been... Dante's been our best practice player. He's lost 30 pounds. Um, you know, I, I've been, I, I knew Dante, I recruited Dante, obviously we played against him. Um, but I think, you know, just having him back <clears throat> was really huge, just cause it kind of, it, it helped the people that we were bringing in recruiting uh, was, you know, guys that had stayed and bought in. And he was able to kind of talk about what we had done in April our individual program, what we were doing, some things we were changing. Um, and he's just, he's been, he's been an unbelievable leader. Uh, like I'm talking about lights out. And it started from my first meeting with him. And, you know, he loves this place. Um, and he wanted to, you know, he wanted to graduate and play his last year here. But he's lost 30 pounds. His game's really good. And he's led more by example than anything else. Coach, Kevin Richardson with the Baltimore Sun. How has NIL affected uh, recruiting? <clears throat> yeah, NIL is uh, it's not going away. It is what it is. I mean, uh, I, I have a, a great group of guys that have formed a collective that's as good as anybody's. Um, it's a necessary evil. I think it's great for the kids, but it is you, uh, you deal with NIL on a daily basis. I mean, it's in, we don't talk about it, but it's in every conversation if you, if you kind of understand what I'm saying. Um, and I think it's here, it, it's, it's tremendous for these young men because they do a lot. Um, and it's great that they're, they're getting NIL. So it, it's a touchy subject. I'm not allowed to say too much about it. So, but I think it's great for the players. Uh, Nikki Wolcott down back. Uh, you met. You touched on the tempo earlier, and you said this group might be able to play at a higher one than your teams in the past. What about this group is different? We're, we're really not that big. So when you, when you look at our roster, um, we're big on the wings. Uh, inside, you know, we're just not as we're not big and dominant. We're not going to be able to slow down and and just kind of grind it out. Um, I like our guard play. I like our, you know, we shoot the basketball really well. So I think we have, we're really going to have to work on the way we shoot the basketball. Um, and, you know, I slowed down the last couple of years just because of, of necessity because of injuries, to be honest with you. It's tough to play fast when you have seven guys. Uh, I think this roster can go nine to ten deep. Hey, Kevin. George Gerber, Washington Times. You really immersed yourself in the culture of not only the university, but the entire state of Maryland in the six or seven months that you've been here. Do you have a favorite moment or memory in your travels across the state this summer that kind of sticks out about the passion and the people uh, that make up the state? I 
know, you mentioned cracking crabs yeah, in, I mean, in that, Minneapolis. Yeah, that that was. Um, I don't have that down. Coach Cox, I don't know if he's here, man. That guy, he's like an expert at cracking crabs. He taught the whole team. Uh, no, I, I, I've you know it was kind of weird. My family didn't move down till August, so I was kind of I was a bachelor for like three months. And really, what I wanted to do was kind of hit every part of the state and just kind of see and get the feel, you know, from Annapolis. Uh, I've fallen in love with Baltimore. I think Baltimore is awesome. Um, it's, it's got such a cool vibe to it, but you know, even it, it just, that was just my goal. I just wanted to see what the people were all about, kind of get get their vibe. Um, so I spent a lot of time just going out, grabbing a beer, eating dinners. Um, I like crab cake. I don't like cracking crabs. I'll eat the crab cake, but the cracking thing is it's a lot of work for minimal return. You know, I just think it's a lot easier to order a crab cake and the guy puts it there. It's all that. You know, you crack it and you take the legs off and. And you're sitting there and you're like you have to eat like 50 of them you know for one crab cake so uh, I like crab cakes but it's been this this is an, this area is everything I thought it was um, I sp I've spent a lot of time in DC too um, I love just walking around DC looking at the monuments um, but that's been my goal is just to kind of really get a good feel I knew I knew the area I, I recruited the area but I really just wanted to get the vibe of, of the people in the state and it's a great state Coach, I was wondering, what, how do you measure your expectations going into year one? You mentioned how this is a, a fan, a, a really strong fan base that wants the, wants the win. But like going to year one with a new program, how do you measure your expectations for a season? No, I, I think it's going to be the same every year. It's going to be the Big Ten championship, national championship. That's the goal of this program. Is it? Is it going to be? Is every year going to be possible? Some years probably more than not, but that is our goal every year. Our goal will not be anything different between, besides win a Big Ten championship and hang it up. Um, no other expectation is allowed in this program. Hey, Coach, uh, it's not like you're not familiar with who we're going to play this year. You played everybody. You're known for that. You know, with the way you came in and the way you had to put the team together, do you feel this team can be competitive? against the upper reaches that we yeah, uh, face this year? Absolutely. Um, I, I I don't think we're going to be as smooth in the beginning as I would like. Like, I, you know, I have, I think I have 13 guys that have played for six different coaches. Um, and there's times we look really good in practice. And there's times where they're, someone that's played for a coach three years does in a totally different style than ours his reaction it just goes back to what he's reacted for the last three years, and that breaks everything down. Uh, so I, the, I think the biggest thing for me is I'm going to be patient because I know I think we'll, we're going to be really good once we can kind of get through December. I think we're going to be really good. Um, I like the way, I, like I said, I like the way these guys are, are practicing. I love the way we shoot the basketball. It's just a matter of all of us getting on the same page defensively, and that's going to take a little bit of time. And Most coaches aren't patient, but the one thing I have learned is that you have to be you have to be patient early on. All right, last question I'll hear for Coach, and then I'll have the players coming out. Uh, MSC both at Studio Times. Uh, Coach, I don't know what kind of discussions you have about this, but um, there's been a lot of talk about NCAA tournament expansion recently. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that and how you feel about potentially expanding the tournament from its current format. I don't think we should expand it. I think the NCAA should. I think the NCAA should, instead of expanding it, should take some of that money and give it back to the players. I think they, we make a lot of money off the NCAA tournament, and I think they should have a playoff share. If you make the NCAA tournament, instead of expanding the team, expanding the tournament, and maybe weakening, not maybe weakening, but I think taking that extra money from all this and giving it back to the players that have earned it, I think that's where their, their focus should be instead of making tournaments bigger and spending more money when they have the money that they should be giving back to the players.